All right, I'm Rich Folley. We're at the National Book Festival, run by the Library of Congress here in Washington, D.C. It is an amazing day. We've had people running all over us. I want to introduce everyone on our set right now. We have John Sheshka, our guest host. John. Glad to be here. Sticking with us. Thank We're not you. letting you go Thank yet. You. <laughs> and we have a new guest. We have Michael Buckley. Hi. My Michael is the author, the, uh, most recently, of Undertow. Yes, that's But also the Sisters book. Grimm series, Nerds, all of which we'll talk about a little bit. Great. Great. But this is quite a departure for you. This is your first YA novel, an entirely different audience for you. It's a, yeah, it's a big, scary roller coaster that I'm on. I, I was very used to young kids um, adoring me, and, uh, <laughs> and now I have young uh, teenage girls being sort of, uh, whatever, kind of. Yeah, um, yeah. But it, it's fun. It's, um, it's a brand new audience, and they have a very strong opinions, and uh, I'm learning... Um, I'm learning the ropes, I would say, yeah. Yeah, what inspired you to jump to the YA audience? I mean, this thing is brilliant. Yeah. I got first Thank say, it's, just, it's honestly just, it's dark and original, uh, and, and just really deeply With felt, and action-packed, yeah. oh, which is kind of really I, nice. To be honest, it came to me in a dream, and then I wrote it down, and I, I just left it alone, because I knew it wasn't yeah. a middle grade book. Yep. Um, and I tried to wrestle it into being a middle grade series, yeah. and then, but it just wouldn't. The, the ideas that kept slipping into it, which were a lot about the civil rights movement and how we actually treat immigrants and like yeah. actually what's going on in the papers right now, um, yeah. they just kept seeping into it. And then I, I looked at it and I was like, this is way too yeah. complex and layered to be a middle grade story the way it, it should be told. So. It yeah, you should maybe explain me. a little bit of it too, because I love that it's so topical. It could be read right now but, as what's going on yeah. with yeah, refugees. It, it's immigrants. a story. Yeah, it's a story of a, a young woman. Uh, well, she's 14 in the beginning of the story, and she lives in Coney Island, which is a very rich, multicultural neighborhood, but also a very yeah. poor neighborhood. And uh, one day she witnesses um, 30,000 people walk out of the ocean, like a brand new. <laughs> A World. brand new race of people. Yeah. Right. Um, and they build a tent city on the beach in Coney Island and they stay. And the book actually starts off three years after that event when they're still there. And it, the, the concept is, um, I suppose they're mermaids and in, in some way you could describe them that. But, but the bigger idea was what would we do as, a, as Americans if we had to deal with a brand new minority group? Um, maybe even one that wasn't even supposed to exist. Right. And yeah. I did a lot of research, like again, on the civil rights movement and uh, Brown versus Board of Education, which was a huge influence um, on some of the events that happened in the book. And, and I, I came to the conclusion that we probably wouldn't handle it any better <laughs> than we ever had. Well, I think that's yeah. the brilliance of this book, that you take those really deep topics and couch it in this kind of fantasy fable where people can say like, oh, we wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And then you think about it a little bit and go like, oh yeah, we're doing that well, that's, right well, that's now. that's true. The initial fascination, they come aboard, everyone's like, wow, that's wild. Starts to seep into some of the traditional biases and anger that might you know, come yeah. up. It all of a sudden felt very, today, like yeah. you said earlier. All of oh a man, you your character it. is like Governor Bachman. Yeah, yeah there's a, yeah, just like, there's I think a, I've there's seen a her governor on uh, named Bachman yeah. in the book. Yeah. It could easily be Mr. <laughs> Trump at this point. But yeah. um, it, it's odd because, you know, I feel like the, the uh, anti-immigrant vibe in this country is hitting a fever pitch almost. Yep. Yep. And like people are beating each other up in the streets. Um, it, uh, about it now, and, it, and it's it's sort of um, bewildering to me. I didn't expect it when I was writing the book, and then now it's sort of taken off. And oh yeah, and could not be more topical. And the other great thing you do in the book is just nail the Coney Island neighborhood. Right. Uh, Michael and I both live in Brooklyn, and, and yeah. Coney Island is just a kind of a beautiful, weird, gritty, great. It, it, I like to call it the People's Amusement Park. Yeah. Because. Uh, until recently, when they've actually been putting some money into it, it, it it's like a, an amusement park inside a ghetto. Yeah. And it, and I always wonder what it must feel like to like yeah. to live with with so few options. Growing up in that neighborhood. Yeah. You know, like there's not a lot of jobs. There's not a lot of money. 
Um, and then to look out the window and see an, a, like a Ferris wheel. Like, I don't know. Or like, I love when your main character, Lyric, a... says like, yeah, we got no museums or nothing. We got like, you can shoot a guy with a paintball gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, which is true. There was, like, a, that there was, was the a, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you would call it a ride, but there was an amusement Michael and I are sorry we did that. But. <laughs> called Shoot the Freak. <laughs> yeah. Where you took a <laughs> paintball gun and shot this guy who'd run <laughs> and he around wore, in like, this empty pads lot. And stuff yeah, in and an empty lot. He had a Saddam Hussein mask for a while. We only did it for research. We didn't do it for fun. Well, your, your yeah. character lyric though is really cool. I mean, she's uh, she's cool. She's uh, like somebody I think that a lot of people can re resonate with. She resonates with me, and I'm I'm older, but I think girls who read this and guys too are going to find her very cool, and somebody they're going to want to follow. Well, it, I think there's a it's sort of a tradition in young adult novels to write this sort of milky girl who needs to be rescued, and I don't yeah. I don't know any women like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's that, another great thing too. I mean, that's a huge leap that you wrote it from the girl's point of view. Yeah, which it was, which is crazy. And how did you even decide to do? that? I kind of love your like acknowledgement at the end. Like, there's some great writers you mentioned. Well, I knew that because I'm like I just turned 46 and I'm writing about a 17 year old girl. So there's a creepy level nothing wrong of with thing that. there. <laughs> uh, I basically went to a bunch of female writers. Uh, friends of mine like uh, Adele Griffin and Rebecca Searle and Jenny Han and yeah. uh, who write great young adult fiction and I asked them you know what do, what do your readers want from you what do you want from them what is too far to describe you know yeah. what would you what would you be comfortable with me describing and yeah. they gave me amazing advice I honestly feel like you know, those times that we met and had lunch or drinks, that, that it was almost like a master's program and yeah. how to write a young adult woman. Because yeah, I can write a little is, girl. Worked. Like those, those women, are they, did, they did. They gave me writers. great advice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you picked some good ones to ask. But um, the, yeah. the, the readers that started with you at Sisters Grimm, I mean, it's been 10 years since those books started, and they're I ready know. to sort of maybe make this natural leap to YA with you as you go there well, yourself. Well, that's the hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen. Well, there's still Have you been getting fan mail from your like previous sister's grin? I, I, get, I still get fan mail, but I don't know if they're even aware that this is out there. Yeah. I get fan mail where like, when's the next Sister's Grimm book? And yeah. when is... Because I... Well, that's it, me. I'm sorry. I yeah, yeah. They're all written from Well, they will be asking yeah. it a lot because well, Elton John is making the movie with you and the rock of well, pictures. And well, he's actually down. making a movie uh, about uh, the other series I wrote called Nerds. Oh, I'm sorry. I no, know it's that. okay. Yeah, no. Uh, now, we've been uh, on the in the uh, Hollywood rodeo for <laughs> Sisters Grimm many, many times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And... Um, is that luckily, the delicate term, the, the Hollywood? L l l luckily, uh, um, there's a, another book series called Land of Stories, and and there's a show called Grimm, and uh, Once Upon a Time. So you don't actually need to make a Sisters Grimm movie <laughs> It'll now. Just keep coming. Um, yeah, because those are all just you know borrowing very liberally from what I did. But, oh man, this would make a great movie. Too. Oh, and it's going to be a trilogy, right? Yeah, the second one is called Raging Sea. It comes out in February. Um, yeah. Knock on wood. And uh, I'm excited about it. It's a it's a completely different um, twist on yeah. this one. This ends on a cliffhanger, and um, it also ends dark, dark, yeah, dark. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing I have trouble writing too. Is like to keep that conflict alive, which you do. It's just heartbreaking in yeah. there. Yeah, the rest like... of the story is uh, is re is set actually in the Texas desert. Yeah. Um, so. Perfect place for yeah, mer people. I, I, because the thing is, like, I hate mermaid books. I really, I just do. Like, you I maybe shouldn't have got into mermaid this. Thing. Yeah. No, but. I mean, how many, how many ways can you describe water? Really, but you describe like, those it, different characters just well, that, beautifully. The, There's like the blobby ones. Get them out of the water. Mean that ones. Was how it, well, that, yeah, that yeah. was the answer. Yeah. Well, you have two. There's another one. It's coming in February. February. You just mentioned, which is great. And then the third one. They're coming so quick. The third one is. I have no idea what it's about. Oh, so, right, we're okay. working on it now. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No I one's watching this, so that's great well, that you can I'm, this. I'm like. thrilled that, that you have given us something new to jump to for you. Thank it's you. It's fun to watch your career evolve. Um, these books are really awesome. I think you're gonna find a whole new set of fans as well. I hope so. I, I'm really proud of it. I, I'm very happy. The reviews have been amazing, and, uh, and everybody who has read it, it's just been so kind to me so like no that was a brave jump yeah i predict another hollywood rodeo for this one as well <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> but thank you very much for thank joining you. us thanks it's for really cool me. yeah thanks and, for coming uh, over to our living room